first or second order uh, really meet. <coughs> what all goes down to, you know, basically uh, what needs to happen for a reaction to occur. We know the first thing that needs to happen is they need to collide. They need to bump into each other. Okay, and so on the rate determining step, where they're bumping into each other, that's pretty much going to determine the coefficient, or excuse me, the um, rate order. All right, and really, what we can look at is the coefficient of um, the rate determining step. So you can't look at an overall reaction and determine this, but if you're looking at the elementary step and the rate determining step, you can basically figure out the order, but when you do it like this, they call it molecularity. All right? So if you have a first order reactant, that means you only have one mole of that, one molecule of that in the rate determining step. So A. All right? So if you double A, you're doubling the concentration of that, and so you're doubling the rate. If you have two moles of that, okay, so we'd usually write it 2A, okay, but if you think about it, it's A plus A, A has to bump into itself. Okay, so this is going to be weird, but if you double the concentration of A, you're doubling both of the concentrations. So you're increasing the collisions by both of the things that are colliding with each other. Okay, and it turns out when you collide both, do both of that, that will square the rate. That's where N equals 2 comes out of. Um, and then, uh, you know, if A um, is uh, reacting with something else, both of those would be first order because increase the concentration of A doesn't really increase both of the things that are colliding with it, just one of them. Okay? And uh, what we would say is this is overall order 2 because when you talk about overall order, you just sum all of the orders. So that's why it's written 2. And then you could have term molecular reactions where three molecules have to collide, but you know, those are kind of rare, so you don't really see those all too often. If we were to increase the rate, on A plus B, just on A, to double it, would it affect the, the, the rate? Would, the rate would double, yes. On the A only, but not on B. Yes. No, but the overall rate would still double. If you double the concentration of A, the rate would double. If you double the concentration of A and B, the rate would quadruple. Mm -hmm. So we cannot just do one within the... Oh, you could use the one, reaction. yeah. Mm -hmm. Within the same reaction. Yep, within the same reaction, yes. Yeah, you can you can affect by the rate by just adding by messing with any one of the reactants. <laughs> All right. So um, we've uh, we know the relationship between temperature and activation energy and um, rate, uh, but you know what we want to do is just here just show you how we would uh, calculate the effect of those parameters on the rate. <clears throat> and it's in the rate constant, okay? So we got the rate law, which is rate equals K times the concentration of A raised to some power. The Arrhenius equation is the equation for the rate constant. So the rate constant. And it is K equals A times E exponential, the E button on your calculator, like natural log 2.7, whatever, log 2.7, whatever, base, <laughs> whatever that is, raised to the negative E sub A over RT. All right, so now we need to uh, tell you what these things are. Okay, so we know what the rate constant is. Rate constant is K. A is called the frequency factor. For something called the frequency factor, why didn't they label it as F? That would have been better, but no, okay? What is the frequency of factor? It is the measure of how often a, an effective collision occurs.
So we know that they have to collide with the proper orientation, right? Like an effective collision. And the easier it is for them to collide like that, the higher the frequency factor. If it's really hard for them to collide like that, like it's a very narrow angle, or one atom has to sneak past some really big atom, and that big atom's blocking it all the time, uh, it would have a really low frequency factor. <coughs> e sub A, what was that? Activation energy. R is the ideal gas constant. And for that one, we're going to use the, uh, this value, 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. And so all we did was last semester, Gen Chem 1, you used 0 0.08206 probably. And that's liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. Ring a bell. Okay. And so all we did was convert liter atmospheres to joules. Because, of course, activation energy can have units of energy. And then T, what do you think T? Temperature. Temperature. And then, of course, in Kelvin. All right. It's R times T. Hmm. <laughs> little e, that's the exponential function. So it's E, raise, uh, all that raised to the, so it's probably just on the calculator button. All right, so you can see that all of these values, the activation energy, the temperature, and the frequency factor, how do they impact the rate? Well, they're going to increase the K if they do affect it, they increase the rate constant. So that is what changes. So the rate constant, K, uh, is constant, only when temperature is constant, activation energy is constant, okay? So if we increase the temperature, what happens? It increases the rate constant, which increases the rate. If you lower the activation energy, somehow, some way, maybe we'll talk about that in the future, okay? If we lower the activation energy, what are we gonna do? That increases the K, which increases the rate. Okay. <coughs> the frequency factor, yeah, so increasing the frequency factor increases the number of effective collisions, which would increase K. That's H, that's H. That K, yeah, the K and the rate constant. A to the Yes, so not a great choice. So yes, that A was like, hey, if we have A going to products, like, is a reactant. Okay, so that is a reactant's concentration. A down here is the frequency factor. You know, I always do that and I've never been called out on that. That's not very good. I should have used like X or something to differentiate. All right. Okay, so that's uh, where the uh, values for activation energy and temperature go into the Arrhenius equation.